America, the people, the places, the names, faces. This is America. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Douglas aboard the rocket jet to Florida. We're only funning, of course, but then our entire half hour is in fun. Tonight's armchair vacation takes us to Florida to see 15 of the most unusual and entertaining outdoor attractions to be found anywhere in America. These are just brief glimpses of what we have in store for you in that vacation land that features fun, sun, sand, and sea. It's only natural that a fun tour of Florida should start in St. Augustine, founded in the year 1513 by the Spanish explorer Ponce de Leon. For it was de Leon's search for the Fountain of Youth, a search that history incidentally considers a fable, that triggered Florida's passion for colorful tourist attractions. The ruins of the old fort guarding the harbor are well worth visiting, but here's the big attraction, the site of the so-called Fountain of Youth. The water has a slightly sulfuric taste, but just listen to the sweet talk that goes with it. Now, this is the fountain of youth water. It's always a pleasure to give my fellow countrymen a boost. But in this case, I feel rather ashamed of myself in doing so. Being that you already look so young, I think it's a shame to give you this, but I'd rather give it to you if you take a little bit at a time. The man with the flattering phrases is Jimmy Ponce, who says that he traces his ancestry back to the great explorer. Get to do the job. Silver Springs, just six miles from Ocala, doesn't go back as far in history as the Fountain of Youth, but its attractions are numerous. It has sandy beaches for sun worshippers and crystal clear water for people who don't mind getting wet. Now there are 14 springs in all, one of them the largest in the world. But the big deal here at Silver Springs are these electrically operated flat bottom, glass bottom boats. The water is so clear, the visibility is just about perfect, even in springs 80 feet deep. The springs are loaded with fish, mostly perch, and you can actually hand feed them if you don't mind risking a few scratches. Finally, just for pure relaxation, you're off on scenic jungle cruises along the different streams. Now let's leave Silver Springs and the mainland and drive over to the Gulf side of Florida. Our destination is Tarpon Springs and here at Tarpon when the sponge fleet and the shrimp fleets are in, the slips and docks look like gaily painted picture postcards. Sponge fishing at Tarpon Springs today isn't what it used to be. Synthetic sponges have sharply reduced the demand for natural sponges. But sponge fishing hasn't died out completely. A few divers still probe the ocean floor. Aboard these specially built sponge boats, the sponges brought up by the divers are washed and rinsed, then dried and sent to market. And you might ask, well, who buys natural sponges nowadays? Well, mostly people who believe, and perhaps rightly so, the natural sponge will clean up grease better than the synthetic product. That's what they told us at Tarpon Springs. 
But today, shrimp is king at Tarpon Springs, the succulent, world-famous Gulf shrimp. Well, shrimp or sponge or what have you, the big deal at Tarpon Springs from the tourist point of view are the nostalgic memories of yesteryear. The helmeted divers who risked and sometimes lost their lives to reap a harvest from the sea. The fleet's in, and that cry is enough to send anyone to Tarpon Springs. Drive due south from Tarpon Springs, and a long drive it is, and then ask for directions to Chakaloski Island. Until the causeway from the mainland was built in 1958, Chakaloski was just another of the primitive and relatively inaccessible islands that dot Florida's two coastlines. The magnet that draws us to Chakaloski is this old country store, Smallwoods. Now, if you were raised in a small town as I was, you'll have the eerie feeling that you've been here before. And that's because Smallwoods is a throwback to country stores we used to know. Stores that were musty and dusty and rich in the wonderful smells of nutmeg and spice. Captain Ted, who came to Chakaloski in 1896, is gone now, but the store continues under the management of his daughter, Thelma. Smallwoods is also the post office for Chakaloski Island, and we asked Thelma Smallwood to tell us what mail delivery was like in the old days. Well, the uh, mail used to come by sailboat in the late 1890s, and when it came in, the captain would announce arrival by blowing the conch horn. Even aside from the mail, a lot of yesterdays are here. A sawfish saw with a hand-painted picture, old-style ivory keychains, flower barrel and scoop. You name it, they have it at Smallwoods on Chokoloski, where the past refuses to surrender to the present. And while we're still on the subject of yesterdays, let's continue south again just a few miles to Sarasota, Florida, and the attraction known as Horn's Cars of Yesterdays. Now, if you're a car buff, this is the place for you. For here, still in perfect operating condition, are some of the most elegant cars of years gone by. This is the J model Duesenberg, and even in those days, it cost about $19,000. The 1911 Stafer, the only one of its kind made. The 1912 Flanders. And this magnificent fire engine red job is the Pope Toledo, the first car guaranteed to travel a mile a minute. It was originally advertised as the quiet mile a minute car. There's a fascinating sideshow exhibit here at Horns, the Music Box Arcade. And there are numerous antique music boxes such as these, all in working condition. But this jukebox is the jewel of the collection. Now listen. Uh, this is the first automatic jukebox. It was introduced at the Chicago World's Fair in 1893. There are 12 metal discs, and it plays two tunes for a nickel. section of Florida looks like this, for this is the Everglades country, a sea of grass and swamps, decaying cypress, and wildlife galore. 
You can take week-long cruises of the Everglades aboard shanty boats such as this. Boats that carry up to 16 passengers, serve excellent meals, and really explore the Everglades. Or, for just a few pennies, you can take brief airboat tours such as this one operated by Ray Wooten. The people who live and work in the Everglades will tell you that the swamp buggy is the most versatile of all vehicles for exploring the glades. This particular buggy was built by Paul Frank, the driver, and his dad way back in 1949. Swamp buggies like these are used primarily here in the Florida Everglades for hunting and exploration. Uh, in our exploration of the Florida Everglades, we find Indian mounds of uh, the uh, Calusa and uh, many of the camps of the uh, Seminole Indians, which have been abandoned some 70 and 80 years ago. And in these camps, we find various types of relics that have been left by these people. And uh, we find various coins and pieces of money that the Indians used in the early days. We found coins back as far as 1842, half dimes and things of that nature. The Everglades teams with alligators, tens of thousands of gators. And believe it or not, gators can sing, or at least they try. And for proof, we're going to make our way to the Everglades Wonder Gardens, just a few miles north of the Everglades region. The gardens are owned by the Piper brothers, Les and Bill, and here Les is setting up special amplifiers so that we can hear his singing alligators. Now listen. Supposedly, music hath charms to soothe the savage beast, but not these crocodiles in a nearby pool. Incidentally, crocs and gators don't mix. The ferocious crocodile would chase the gators clear out of the county. If you think that singing alligators are unusual, wait until you see part two of tonight's fun tour of Florida. We'll prove that Florida is rapidly becoming the kingdom of animal capers. First, this brief intermission. Tommy Bartlett's deer farm at Silver Springs is an absolute must if you have children in your family. We've arrived at chow time, signaled by a loud bell, and the stampede is on. You'll notice that there are several South American llamas among the herd, and as you can see, all of these creatures are gentle and harmless. Goofy the llama is a glutton. He never stops eating. There are other interesting attractions at the Deer Ranch. For example, Desmond the Drumming Duck. And a romantic rabbit known as the Kissing Bunny. And here's the showstopper at the Deer Ranch, the goat that lives in a treehouse. Seven miles south of Miami, the startled motorist is inclined to slam on the brakes when he approaches the Serpentarium, a long, low building featuring this massive concrete head of the King Cobra. Bill Haast, the director of the Serpentarium, says that he is the only human in the world to survive the bite of the King Cobra, and the only man who has immunized himself 
against its venom. Just the same, he's mighty cautious in handling this 14-footer. Now here's what we really came to see, the largest Galapagos tortoise in captivity. His name is Gus, and the pretty young rider is Naya Haas, Bill's daughter. Galapagos Gus is 43 years old and weighs 500 pounds, but hear this. His life expectancy is 200 years, and he may eventually weigh in at a tidy 1,000 pounds. Gus is strictly a vegetarian, and for a snack, he loves hibiscus flowers. The other tortoise, George, is a different species and is indigenous to a group of islands in the Indian Ocean. The monkey jungle, also a few miles outside Miami, is mad, 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 and delightfully so. The mood of the crowds is always cheerful. The customers seem to sense that they're in for a barrel of monkey shines and no pun intended. And these monks and chimps are clever. They play the drums, work out on the trampoline, run a tightrope blindfolded, and backwards when they feel like showing off, and they'll even imitate certain well-known recording stars. They've added an Amazon rainforest at the monkey jungle, and they've imported rare species of monks and chimps from South America to live in this natural habitat. This is the unusual red-faced wakari. You know, I've always thought monkeys dislike water, yet here are Java monkeys swimming underwater, something that I at least have never seen before. Well, wouldn't you know it, they do have a gimmick at the monkey jungle. They cage the people and let the monkeys run loose. On a tamer but equally colorful note, do take the family to the parrot jungle, just a few miles away from the place where they cage the customers. You know, there was a time when parrots and cockatoos were known mainly for their ability to mimic phrases such as Polly wants a cracker or 23 skidoo, but how times have changed. Now they're taught to roller skate, ride a bicycle on a high wire, run chariot races in which neither bird can possibly lose, and reward the appreciative crowd with a peck and a kiss. Watch the reactions. Now very quickly, here are brief highlights from the rest of the show. shell game, and apparently so has this parrot. The show finale is a tribute to the space age. After the parrot show, a horde of magnificent pink flamingos race to and fro. Well, between the flamingos and the entertaining parrots and cockatoos, you'll spend the better part of the afternoon here at Parrot Jungle, and you won't be disappointed. The Caribbean Gardens in Naples, Florida, came into being some years ago through the efforts of the well-known botanist Henry Nerling. The gardens are famous for the variety of tropical flora and fauna. For example, this magnificent white peacock shown here in the mating ritual of displaying its tail feathers. Incidentally, this white peacock is a mutation.
Now, in recent years, Caribbean Gardens has become best known for, of all things, a duck vaudeville show. The whistle blows and the ducks and geese scamper away to shoot the chute and formally open the show. Here they come. Notice how gracefully and willingly... Say, wait a minute, this wasn't in the script. Let's do it again. The ducks and geese are trained for the acts that we will see at a special animal behavior school in Hot Springs, Arkansas. By rewarding them constantly with food, they're taught simple stunts at first, such as going round and round a small bush. Gradually, more and more skill is demanded by the trainers, diving for food on command, retrieving colored rings and bringing them to the trainer, and operating the duckmobile. Here, the trainer is planting red and white flowers. Now, on command, the fowl must pick only the red flower and bring each one back to the trainer. For a change of pace, the show offers a gaily colored toucan that rides the ferry and then perches on the shoulder of the nearest member of the audience. Back in the main arena, it's time to pick a mate. The ducks and geese are expected to match with the right picture. You got the wrong girl, fella. Ah, that's better. Well, the highlight of this unusual duck vaudeville show presents Arturo, the piano virtuoso, and Daisy, a female mallard. He plays and she dances inside the ring when she feels like it. The Caribbean Gardens in Naples, Florida. A must on the list of stops you'll want to make if you're interested in fauna, flora, and just plain fun. When we first flew over Naples, we couldn't help noticing a large residence that seemed to have two huge swimming pools. We learned later that this was the plush home of Mr. John Slater. Now, the small freshwater pool is for swimming, but the large pool has salt water from the Gulf, and this pool has become a sanctuary for what Mrs. Slater jokingly calls Slater's Circus. Here we saw a whole variety of sea creatures, Humboldt penguins, sea lions, harbor seals, porpoise, a sea cow, and turtles. Now let me repeat that this is a private residence, not a public attraction. Let me also say that John Slater is neither eccentric nor an exhibitionist. He is simply a man who loves these creatures of nature and sees nothing wrong in spending his money to protect the hunted from the hunters. Mrs. Slater, Heidi, doesn't like water too much, but taking after her husband, she's on her way to starting a menagerie of her own with her pet African cheetah, Baba. Well, we left the Slater home feeling as you would feel had you been with us, but it was an inspiring high note on which to end our whirlwind vacation in Florida, the land of fun, sun, sand, and sea. I'm sure you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that it's not possible in 30 minutes or even in 30 hours to show all that's worth seeing of Florida's hundreds of colorful attractions. But as the months and years go by, we'll try to fill in the gaps on our America series. Now this is Jack Douglas saying, I hope we'll meet again next week somewhere in America. Until then, thank you so much and good night.